Welcome to this video on leukemia versus lymphoma. This is going to be the first of three videos that will go through these types of cancers. This first video is going to be a quick overview just so you know what the, the main differences are. And then we're going to go into video two on the lymphomas, specifically Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then we'll go into the different types of leukemias in the third video. So firstly, let's get an understanding of what these terms mean. Starting with leukemias. So leuk refers to the term white. So usually referring to white white cells or leukocytes, whereas emia usually means dysfunction in blood. So a leukemia generally means a white blood cell cancer that's predominantly focused within the blood. Whereas lymphomas, lympho can refer to both lymphocyte, which is a specific type of white blood cell, or lymph nodes. And oma means cancer. So lymphomas means a cancer of lymphocytes that are generally found in lymph nodes. Okay, so the crux of these two conditions are cancers. Now with all cancers, the, the problem is at a genetic level. So the genes that regulate the way that the cell turns on and off is problematic. So that means the cancers are just switched on and just go over and over and over and over, just keep growing and growing and growing. And that's why we get a tumor. And then if it goes elsewhere, we get malignant cells, which cause problems ongoing. So the problem with these cells is the cancer arises in the bone marrow. So the malignant or the cancer-like cell is a derivative of the, the bone marrow cells that make these blood cells, okay? Now, when we look at the, the bone marrow that makes uh, blood cells, it comes from red bone marrow. So you can see this diagram here is of a long bone, like your femur or your humerus, okay? And at, at the end of the long bones, we see all this red bone marrow. Okay, so this is the area that makes new blood cells. But predominantly, the, the, the types of bones that have more red marrow in them are flat bones, like your sternum, your clavicle, your ribs, your vertebra, your skull. They're probably a much more efficient area to make these bone cells. Okay, and that's where we have the red bone marrow. Now, the red bone marrow has a stem cell or many, many stem cells in it. And this the, the most early phase stem cell is what we call a multipotent hemopoietic stem cell, which just means a blood cell that can make many different types of blood cells, okay? Now, just so you know how frequently these cells have to replicate or copy themselves, for your red blood cells, which carry oxygen around your body, you have to make 2 million per second. So that's just telling you how active these bone marrow cells are. Whereas platelets, which are cells to help clot the blood, it's double that, so about 4 million platelets per second. Whereas the white blood cells, a little less, so maybe 100,000 per second white blood cells have to be made in these bone marrow cells. So that means that they're constantly copying. Now, when there is a cancer or a problem at a genetic level, that means this stem cell just gets turned on constantly, okay? So let's firstly focus on where does it go awry with the lymphomas? So when you make the stem cell in the red bone marrow, which is many, many stem cells, it's not one, in all the red, the red marrow in your body, this multipotent hemopotic stem cell or this multipotent stem cell is turned on, copying, copying, copying. Now there's two possible lineages that can go down. It can either go down what we call a lymphocyte line, which makes the lympho cells, or it can go down a myeloid line, which can make all the other cells like red blood cells, platelets, mast cells, and the different type of white blood cells. With lymphomas, we're focused on the lymphoidal line, okay? So the the genetic problem arises, it starts to cause a shift to go down the lymphoidal line, which means we move into op options between a T cell and a B cell, or a T lymphocyte and a B lymphocyte. So the reason why they're called T and B is where they mature. 
The T cells will actually come out of the bone marrow and then move up to an area just above the heart called the thymus where they mature. Whereas the B cells, um, which are more about making antibodies, they'll actually stay in the bone for a bit longer where they mature. Okay. Now, where this maturing takes place is called the primary lymphoidal tissue, okay, which are the thymus and the, the bone marrow. Okay. From here, now remember the cells are dysfunctional in the lymphomas, so they're already dysfunctional. From here, they'll come out of the thymus or the bone, they'll go into the blood, and then they'll go to their storehouse where they're going to wait to help um, try to find a new infection. And these are known as the secondary lymph lymphoidal tissue, known as your lymph nodes. So this could be under your armpits, in your groin, around your uh, gastrointestinal tract, or up in your neck. And this is where the problem with lymphomas lie. They get housed in this place, and then they start to copy and copy and copy and copy. That means the tumor gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's where you start to see the, lympho the lymphomas in the neck or in these lymph node positions. But it's important to note that it only comes from the lymphocyte line. Okay, so lymphomas, which usually will be found in the lymph nodes, either in a single location or multiple above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm or even in places like the spleen and the liver. But it's important to note that they're only going to be a T or B lymphocyte um, derivative or type. Okay, now compare that to leukemias. Again, the problem is in the stem cell, so that's the genetic problem. So it's the precursor that becomes cancerous. But unlike lymphomas, which can only go down the lymphocyte line, the leukemias can either go down either. So they can either go the lymphocyte line, which again affects the lymphocytes, or they can go down the myeloid line, which can affect the red blood cells, the platelets, the neutrophils, which is about inf early inflammation, the basof sorry, the monocytes, which is making macrophages, which are the big um, eaters that go around eating things that are either dead or damaged or infected, or the eosinophils and basophils, which are about uh, inf in infl inflammation, and parasites, um, allergies. Okay, so leukemias could affect one of those two lineages, and that's usually how it's categorized. It's either a myeloid leukemia or a lymphoid leukemia. But the difference now is it starts to, the cancer starts to accumulate in the bone marrow. So it gets more and more and more and take up more and more room. That means it starts to crowd out the bone, the bone marrow. So that means less and less good cells are there, which means you aren't producing healthy blood cells. But where it's different to the lymphomas, it just spills out into the blood. So it stays diffuse around the blood. They don't go to the lymph nodes. So the leukemias stay throughout the blood. So what you're going to ex expect to see to look with leukemias is the white blood cells start to go up, but they're not very effective. They're dysfunctional. Okay, so infections increase, and this is the difference. So leukemias, you see it solely in the blood, and they can be a mixture of lymphoidal or myeloid lines, whereas lymphomas can only be the, lymph, the lymphocytic line, and they usually accumulate in the lymph nodes. So hopefully now you can see the difference between the two. For the next two videos, we're going to focus on the lymphoma specifically and the leukemia specifically. And as I said, for the lymphomas, we'll go into the two main categories, Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's, and the leukemias will go into the types of the lymphocytic, the myelocytic, and the acute versus the chronic.